A research team at Ankara University analyzed the antioxidant content of common fruits and discovered something the food industry prefers you ignore. One fruit contained 25% more anthocyanins than blueberries, double the resveratrol of red wine, and vitamin C levels that rivaled citrus. The study, published in the Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry, documented polyphenol concentrations so high that pharmaceutical companies began investigating medicinal applications. Yet this fruit does not exist in grocery stores. It does not appear in health food aisles or frozen berry sections. Instead, cities across America classify it as a nuisance and pass ordinances to remove it from public spaces. The official reason, the berries stain sidewalks. The unstated reason, this tree refuses to participate in the commercial food system. It produces abundant fruit without irrigation, without pesticides, without fertilizers, and without human intervention. It drops its harvest freely onto streets where anyone can gather it. The system cannot commodify what nature distributes freely. This is the mulberry tree, Morris species, and its erasure from urban landscapes represents the most honest expression of industrial agricultural priorities. For over 5,000 years, mulberry trees defined civilizations across Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. Chinese emperors cultivated vast mulberry orchards not for fruit, but for the leaves that fed silkworms and generated imperial wealth. The fruit was considered a secondary benefit, a nutritional windfall for peasants and nobility alike. Ancient Greek physicians documented mulberry consumption for digestive health, while Roman naturalist Pliny the Elder cataloged multiple cultivars in his encyclopedic Natural History. The tree traveled the Silk Road alongside merchants, establishing itself in Persia, Turkey, and eventually medieval Europe. By the 1600s, King James I of England attempted to establish a silk industry by mandating mulberry planting across the countryside. The venture failed commercially, but the trees remained, naturalizing in hedgerows and gardens. American colonists brought mulberry cultivation to the New World, planting thousands of trees in hopes of competing with Asian silk production. The silk industry never materialized in America, but the trees thrived, spreading across temperate zones from Massachusetts to California. Indigenous peoples incorporated the abundant fruit into traditional diets, while settlers made preserves, wines, and dyes. Then came the age of concrete and suburban aesthetics, the tree that once symbolized prosperity became classified as a weed. Modern nutritional analysis reveals what ancient civilizations understood intuitively. Mulberries represent one of the most nutrient-dense fruits ever cultivated. A 2012 study published in Food Chemistry compared anthocyanin content across 27 berry species. Mulberries ranked second only to black currants, containing 25% more anthocyanins than blueberries and triple the levels found in strawberries. Resveratrol, the polyphenol famously concentrated in red wine, appears in mulberries at concentrations up to 50 micrograms per gram of fresh fruit. That equals the resveratrol content of two glasses of red wine in a single cup of berries. Vitamin C content ranges from 10 to 25 milligrams per 100 grams, depending on cultivar and ripeness. The protein content reaches 1.4 grams per 100 grams, unusually high for a fruit. Iron levels exceed most berries at 1.8 milligrams per 100 grams. The fiber content reaches 1.7 grams per 100 grams, aiding digestive function. But perhaps most striking, mulberries contain rutin, a flavonoid that strengthens blood vessels and reduces inflammation. A 2010 study in the Journal of Medicinal Food demonstrated that mulberry leaf and fruit compounds lowered blood sugar response by 44% compared to control groups. We replaced this nutritional powerhouse with strawberries bred for shelf life, not nutrient density. The campaign to remove mulberry trees from American cities began in earnest during the 1950s, disguised as urban beautification. City planning departments drafted ordinances citing excessive fruit drop, staining of pavement, and maintenance costs. Property owners received notices demanding removal of mature trees that had stood for generations. 
The real motivation had nothing to do with aesthetics. Mulberry trees produce abundant, freely accessible food in public spaces, undermining the controlled distribution networks that define modern food systems. A single mature mulberry can produce 60 to 100 pounds of fruit annually, dropping continuously throughout a six-week harvest period. This creates what planners termed management challenges, fruit on sidewalks that pedestrians could simply eat. The berries stain concrete, yes, but so do cherries, plums, and crab apples, none of which face similar eradication efforts. The distinction is economic, not botanical. Mulberries cannot be harvested mechanically, cannot survive shipping, cannot tolerate refrigeration, and cannot be sold at premium prices. They ripen over weeks rather than days, making commercial harvest impossible. The tree was designed by nature for free distribution, not profit extraction. Cities chose concrete cleanliness over nutritional abundance. Mulberry trees belong to the genus Morris, with three primary species, Morris alba, white mulberry, Morris nigra, black mulberry, and Morris rubra, red mulberry. These deciduous trees reach heights of 30 to 50 feet with spreading canopies that provide substantial shade. The root system extends deep and wide, making the trees remarkably drought-tolerant once established. Mulberries demonstrate cold hardiness to USDA Zone 4, surviving temperatures down to 30 degrees wife. They thrive in poor soils from sandy loam to heavy clay, requiring no fertilization. The trees produce fruit without cross-pollination, with most cultivars being self-fertile. Fruiting begins in the tree's third to fifth year, continuing for decades with minimal care. Unlike modern fruit crops that demand constant intervention, mulberries resist most pests and diseases naturally. The fruit develops from long catkins that emerge in spring, ripening sequentially from bottom to top over four to six weeks. This extended harvest period made mulberries ideal for household use, but impossible for commercial agriculture. Harvest requires no equipment. Ripe berries fall naturally or release at the slightest touch. The tree asks nothing and gives abundantly. Modern agriculture cannot profit from such generosity. The primary justification for mulberry removal is fruit staining, yet this reveals more about priorities than practicalities. Mulberry juice contains high concentrations of anthocyanins, the same pigments that make blueberries blue and give red wine its color. These compounds stain concrete, fabric, and skin temporarily. Rain washes sidewalk stains within days. Clothing stains vanish with standard washing. Skin stains fade in hours. Yet cities invest thousands of dollars removing mature trees rather than tolerating seasonal purple sidewalks. The calculation is clear. Aesthetic uniformity outweighs nutritional accessibility. Historic town squares across Europe maintain centuries-old mulberry trees alongside marble fountains and limestone buildings. The staining occurs and life continues. American cities could have chosen adaptation, designated harvest zones, community collection programs, or simply acceptance that nature does not prioritize cleanliness. Instead, they chose eradication. The message to citizens, you may not have free food in public spaces. The system demands that nutrition be purchased, not gathered. Mulberry trees require almost no specialized knowledge to cultivate successfully. Bare root trees establish quickly when planted in fall or early spring before bud break. The planting hole needs only to accommodate the root system with no amendments necessary in most soils. Watering during the first season helps establishment, but mature trees survive on rainfall alone in temperate climates. Pruning is optional. The tree naturally develops a strong scaffold of branches. Some growers prune to maintain height below 15 feet for easier harvesting, but unpruned trees simply produce higher yields. Mulch around the base conserves moisture and suppresses competing vegetation. No fertilization schedule exists because none is needed. The tree fixes its own nitrogen needs and extracts minerals from deep soil layers. Pest pressure remains minimal. Birds consume some fruit, but production exceeds their capacity. Disease issues are rare, with occasional leaf spot in humid climates causing cosmetic damage, but no yield loss. 
Harvest involves spreading tarps or sheets beneath the tree and shaking branches. Ripe berries fall immediately. Unripe fruit remains attached. A family can gather gallons of fruit in minutes. The tree returns this abundance annually for 50 to 100 years. Before supermarkets standardized fruit selection, mulberries held cultural significance across diverse civilizations. Chinese literature spanning 3,000 years references mulberry orchards as symbols of rural prosperity and domestic stability. Persian poets used mulberry metaphors to describe patience, as the tree requires years to mature, but then provides for generations. In ancient Greece, black mulberries were sacred to Minerva, goddess of wisdom, connecting knowledge with sustained nourishment. Medieval European herbalists documented preparations involving mulberry bark for digestive complaints and leaf poultices for inflammation. The fruit featured in preserves, wines, and dyes throughout pre-industrial societies. American colonists made mulberry ink, mulberry vinegar, and mulberry syrup. The berries appeared in pies, tarts, and jams across farmstead kitchens. Children gathered fallen fruit as casual snacks during summer play. This casual abundance disappeared within a generation. By the 1970s, most Americans under 40 had never tasted a mulberry. The cultural knowledge of harvest timing, variety differences, and preparation methods faded from collective memory. We forgot not just a fruit, but a relationship with seasonal abundance. Across suburban America, mature mulberry trees still stand in forgotten corners, behind warehouses, along railroad tracks, in abandoned lots. These survivors produce fruit every summer, dropping their harvest onto indifferent ground. Foragers have begun mapping these trees, creating digital guides to urban wild food sources. Small nurseries now offer named cultivars selected for large fruit size and extended harvest periods. Backyard orchardists plant mulberries as permaculture foundation species, providing food, shade, and wildlife habitat. The tree's reputation is shifting from nuisance to treasure among those who question industrial food narratives. Some cities reverse decades-old bans, recognizing that climate adaptation requires embracing low-maintenance, drought-tolerant food sources. Community gardens incorporate mulberries into edible landscapes, teaching new generations to recognize and value what their grandparents knew. The revolution does not require seed catalogs or expensive inputs. It requires only remembering that cities once had food growing in streets that children once ate freely from public trees. That nutrition was abundant before it became profitable. Plant a mulberry tree. Let the sidewalk stain.